It's been a big week of military aggression by the Israelis, which they claim has been performed in self-defense, but is called into question whether those actions were in fact defensive in nature. First up on Tuesday, we have the assassination of free Palestinians in their car in the area of Nablus located in the West Bank. It was just after midday in the occupied West Bank city of Nablus when Israeli special forces along with domestic security agency Shin Bet carried out the raid. Now, Israel claims that the free were part of an armed group which had opened fire at least four times on Israeli soldiers and settlements in the north of the West Bank. But the way in which an Israeli special forces team went about executing them gave no legal due process and was accused by a member of the Israeli Knesset as being an extrajudicial execution of Palestinian youths. My son has been hunted by the Israelis for months. The Israeli intelligence called for my children and threatened them for my son to give himself in. This then led to an explosion of demonstrations and violent confrontations inside of the West Bank. And these tensions were exacerbated the following day outside of the West Bank in Israel itself with Palestinian citizens of Israel as Israeli settlers appeared on camera bragging about taking land in the Negev area alongside a hardline member of the Israeli Knesset. Not only this, Israel also chose the very same night that they had assassinated free Palestinians in the West Bank to bombard Damascus, Syria, a strike which was completely unprovoked, but unlike is usual, resulting in losses on the Syrian side whilst the Israelis are pretty much unscathed, a Syrian air defense missile, a surface-to-air missile, ended up traveling over the border and landed in an open area. Now, Israel says that it exploded in the air and there was no injuries or significant damage on the Israeli side, and this was just another unintended consequence of Israel's actions. But what followed that is that Israel then struck Syria again, killing one Syrian soldier. A Syrian soldier has been killed and five wounded in an Israeli attack near the capital Damascus. Also attacking the Syrian air defense batteries and radar systems in what the Israeli military announced was an act of self-defense and a response to Syria defending itself. All of these moves which Israel describes as being defensive in nature, which others on the opposition side would say are offensive in nature, have only led to more chaos and bloodshed inside the Middle East, many linking this offensive action, as many are calling it, to the revival of Iran nuclear deal talks in Vienna and the positive messages that perhaps the United States, its European allies and Iran can get back into the Iran nuclear deal. We've seen some optimistic statements over the past week or so. Yesterday, the State Department saying that the deal is possible in these rounds of talks. Something that Israel, even if that deal is again revived and restored, claims it will take offensive action in the wake of against Iran's nuclear facilities, not believing that it's a deal that is good for them. But for sure, the Israeli actions this week do not help it get back some of that PR it lost when the Amnesty International Human Rights Watch and Israel's own Bet Selim, the top human rights organizations in the world and on this issue, criticized it, calling it an apartheid state or a state that practices the policies of apartheid, which are war crimes.